and welcome to Living Well. Thank you for watching our show today. My name is Ann Beal and I'm joined today by Christian counselor Sharon Stevens. We are going to talk about an area today called boundaries, healthy boundaries. Maybe your life today feels a little out of control. You feel like everybody else runs it and you don't really have any say about anything. Or you're the opposite where you feel like you pretty much always get your way. Or you feel like people just don't listen to you. That is boundaries and we're going to talk to you about how to have healthy boundaries. Not only how to establish them, but how to live in them respectfully and to treat others well. Thanks for watching us and we hope you'll stay for the whole show. Sharon, can you give us a, a definition of what a boundary really is? What would you call a boundary? Well, boundaries uh, define who we are. Uh, we define what we will uh, allow, what we will not allow, what we choose, what we will not choose. Uh, these, this is what sets us apart in how we know who we are with our boundaries. And uh, two analogies that have been used is like a fence on a property is a boundary, and a fence has a gate. So your personal boundaries, you are to be in charge of the gate on that fence as to what you allow in and what you do not allow in. Another analogy for a boundary is uh, a cell membrane. And uh, the cells in our body have a um, membrane that is permeable, mm -hmm. and that allows it to let the good in and then let the bad out. And so that's what we're to do with our boundaries, is receive love. Let them not let our boundaries be walls where we keep love out, right. but that we let love and good things in, but that we also get rid of the bad. You know, I like your analogy about a property line. We just been looking for land and um, have just bought land, and we spent a lot of time trying to figure out. You know, they have all these different sizes: one acre, two point five, three, and they all seem smaller than you know. Three acres seemed like a lot of land to me. So when they actually mark it off for you and show you what exactly is your land and what's not your land, mm -hmm. and that's that's a real clear line for us to know when we look at physical properties what a boundary is, or like when we kid around about kids and we say we draw that line, do not go across the curb into the road, and they step on the line. I mean, that's a boundary too. So I, li I like that analogy. You know, you talked about the fence, letting the good in and letting the good out. The fence is the boundary. The gate is the boundary. Can you give us an idea of what your opinion is on how you would go about it sounds good, letting the good in and keeping the bad out. But how would someone go about that? Well, uh, boundaries are about uh, taking ownership and responsibility for our lives. And so um, we, we have to be willing to trust in relationships. And that's an example of letting the good in. Mm -hmm. And if we trust and that trust is broken and we are harmed, then the tendency is to put up a wall and not trust again. Instead, we need to realize that instead of judging everybody by one person's behavior, that we will take the risk of trusting again, but be very discerning in our trusting. Mm -hmm. And that's letting the good in, letting ourselves become attached to people, be involved in other people's lives, uh, letting ourselves care about others and let, letting others care about us. So a boundary in relationships is deciding who we will be in relationship with and who we want. Yes. What, what are other kinds of boundaries? I know skin is a boundary. Who, who can touch us and who can't? That's a boundary. Yes, you have um, uh, skin as a boundary. Words can be boundaries. Um, words are what we usually use the most to set no. our boundaries. <laughs> no, no is the biggest word for boundary. <laughs> right. Um, geographical distance can be a boundary. If you feel that it is unsafe for you to be with a person, then you set actual distance between you. Or if you get mad and leave the room, that would be an emotional. Yes, an emotional <laughs> and geographical, distancing. Yes. That would be geographical and emotional. And emotional. Mm -hmm. Saying, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, um, and truth is a boundary. Setting consequences is a boundary. Time. You know, truth is interesting because when you are lied to, you really feel it emotionally. Yes. And that's the thing about boundaries that I have learned is that when they are crossed, 
you feel it. Even yes. if you don't know that you've been harmed, you feel it. And so when someone lies to you, we feel so offended by that. Yes. And that's and that why. why. So truth is a boundary. That's mm -hmm. an interesting one. Mm -hmm. um, other people can be a boundary for us. Can you explain that one a little better? That's a hard one. Uh, if, if a child is being harmed, a parent can come in and protect that child and be a boundary for that person. So to help us. Yes. And then if, if a wife has been in an abusive situation, but she needs to go back home and get her things, she can take a policeman with her mm -hmm. and use that policeman as a boundary. How the law is another boundary. Yeah. We break the speed limit. I hate that one. <laughs> and get a ticket, <laughs> then we've hit up against a boundary. And being nice to a policeman is a boundary. Yes. Well, so saying, yes, sir, give me that ticket. Thank you. Okay. There are... Um, basically relational boundaries and um, functional boundaries. Today we're talking more about the relational boundaries, boundaries in relationship. Mm -hmm. Functional boundaries have to do with our internal boundaries, um, limits that we set on ourselves so that we can function and get work done, self-control, time management, eating. But, but what do we do when, because I know when I was younger I had a really hard time with boundaries. I mean I didn't even know what that word meant. But I did know that I had a hard time saying no. And that was very tough for me to learn that it was okay when I really couldn't do something or I really didn't want to go to something or I really didn't like that food mm -hmm. to say, no, I, I don't really want to go to that movie. It scares me to death. I don't want to see something scary. I'd like to see a romance. Because of the fear that they would say, you're so boring, you know? And so that was tough. Um, what if you say no? Because I know many times I would say, you know, I don't really want to go see that movie. It's scary. And they're like, oh, that's so silly. It's not that scary. It'll be no big deal, you know. And so it, they kind of override what you just said. They negate any decision that you made. And if you have a tough time with no already, it's really hard to do that. Yes, it sounds like it was hard for you to even say that to begin with. And then mm -hmm. once they come back with something else, then the strength wasn't there to say it again. Um, we are not born with boundaries. Boundaries are something we are meant to learn in relationship. So we, in developing our relationships early in life, between um, probably by the time we're three to five years old, uh, according to how our no was treated mm -hmm. at the toddler to three-year-old right. stage, um, if someone became angry when we said no or withdrew their affection when we said no, we got afraid of our no. Mm -hmm. And so we would go along in order to be able to keep that sense of attachment with the person. And so uh, basically later in life we have to learn that it is okay to say no. We have to unlearn that behavior mm -hmm. and learn that it is okay to say no and that it is okay to require people to honor our no. And so in a situation like that, uh, the growth area for that person would be to come back and say, I need you to really hear me. I really do not want to see that show. Now your choice is we can not go to the show, mm -hmm. we can go to a different show, or you can go to that show by yourself, but I really do not want to see that show. And that is hard for a lot of people, yes. and yet that is very loving to do that because if you go ahead and go and see something you don't want to see, or go ahead and eat a food that you don't like, or go ahead and choose an outfit that your mom says she likes better than you like, it, you go ahead and go with that. You think you're loving that person, but really what you're doing is resenting them. I mean, you'll go ahead and do it, and yet you'll resent that they didn't let you do what you wanted. Yes. And then that builds up bitterness, and you usually distance yourself from that person, but you never told them that. You cannot be as close to a person if you are not feeling the freedom to make your own choices. Mm -hmm. If you're making your decisions based on what their reaction is going to be instead of on what is the right thing or the best thing for me to do in this situation. And uh, that's the point of learning healthy boundaries is so that we can be freed up to make our choices on what is the right or best thing to do, not based on fear of someone else's reaction or a, a fear of taking on false guilt mm -hmm. because of the way uh, they make us feel or we think that they make us feel. Because it's interesting, you know, you talked about children with parents overriding what they say or negating what they say or, but adults do that too. So it's, yes. so yes, you need to 
learn to say yes and learn to say no at the correct times. But being aware that the adults are probably still going to do the same things that you felt as a child, which is they're going to pout or they're going to get angry or they're going to, you know, ignore you, be cold, you know, play that I don't want to hear you game, whatever, it push you away. And instead of going, oh, okay, I'll do what you want, you keep that boundary and say, you know what, I know that you don't like this, but I still don't want to do this. And, and I know that you're not talking to me right now because you're upset with me, but I didn't mean to hurt you by what I wanted. I just wanted you to know that I'm different from you. And we are just different, and then, right? Everybody's just yes. made differently. And a boundary is more just saying, you know, we're all made different. You like chocolate, I like vanilla. Um, you like this pattern on a wallpaper, I, I don't. And that's a difference. And that's being honest enough to say, I'm made different from you, and I really don't like that, is a way of loving them by being honest. Uh, when we say yes on the outside, but we're feeling no on the inside that creates an internal anxiety and mm -hmm. stress for us and we feel like we're giving up part of ourselves because in truth we are we're giving that other person more control control that we are meant to have on our choices and what happens to you when you do that uh, as you said um, when you give more that you can freely give without feeling resentment mm -hmm. uh, you build up a resentment and it builds and builds until usually it can be one small thing that they ask and you just blow because of all the resentment you've stored when what you need to do is deal with each situation as it comes up and answer truthfully and honestly mm -hmm. about what you want to do, want to give and to be able to give freely from the heart. Um, the, the proverb is uh, guard your heart with all diligence so uh, don't make decisions that are going to create resentment because you're over giving. You know, I don't know if you've ever had that happen to you, but I know I have, where yes. I just think everything's hunky-dory and great and fine in the relationship and all of a sudden, boom, they blow up and they say, but, you know, I babysat your kids here and I did this there and I did that there and, I, and I would, I'm sitting there stunned and I, I'm saying, but you said you wanted to do that. You said you'd be glad to do that. You invited them. You asked for that. I, I never would have expected you to do that, but because you told me it was fine, I believed you and didn't know that you were upset with me at all. And, um, and the person that did that to me, which seemed so overwhelming to me because I cared for this person so much, were now the best friends in the whole world. But I, I had to figure out over time that, wait a minute, she doesn't always tell me the truth. She'll say yes to almost anything I ask. And I had to learn to ask a second time and say, no, wait a minute. Did you have anything else planned? Is this something that, that is really convenient for you? And sometimes she'd say, well, no, it's not really convenient. I had planned on going to lunch with someone else. And I'd be like, we'll do that. And it's tough. It's almost like you have to read people's minds, which we cannot do. And so when someone doesn't tell us truthful things because they're afraid we're not going to like them, it makes it very hard for us. Yes, and then uh, they become the boundary invader when they blow up like mm -hmm. that person did with you. Right. Uh, she has then invaded your boundaries and she's trying to make you responsible for her inability to set limits and to give you honest answers. Right, and we become boundary invaders when we didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. We're continuing our discussion on healthy boundaries. We're gonna get into a more practical aspect about how you actually do boundaries without hurting another person, how you actually live within the boundaries that you set. So stay here and we'll be right back to discuss that. The long-awaited history book on North Richland Hills is now available. This beautiful 500-page book is rich in family history and tells a story about how a small 19th century settlement has become the third largest city in Tarrant County and one of the greatest cities in Texas. It's North Richland Hills. Pick up your copy today from the North Richland Hills City Hall Water Department, the Richland Hills Tennis Center, Critter Connection, in the North Hills Mall, and at the North Richland Hills Public Library. For more information, call 581-5700. Welcome back with our discussion today with Sharon Stevens, Christian Counselor. We're here to talk about healthy boundaries. And right now we're at the practical aspect of it. How exactly do you go by applying boundaries now that we've talked about what they are? We want to talk a little bit about um, 
why setting boundaries is so important and how they protect you. And then we're going to get into really practically how you do that and why it's so important to have consequences. Sharon, can, can you share a little bit more about the protection factor of boundaries? Uh, yes, we talked about boundaries are really to give us a sense of ownership and responsibility for ourselves. So what do boundaries protect? They protect our feelings, our thoughts, beliefs, our attitudes, what we value, mm -hmm. um, our choices, and um, our ability to set limits, our ability to love. Mm -hmm. And which is what we were talking about before about why it's so important to love even by setting limits. Yes, and uh, so when someone says, you shouldn't feel that way, that is a boundary invasion. Mm -hmm. the, that is uh, your feelings, and feelings tend to just kind of come mm -hmm. before we have much of a chance to do much about it. And so, uh, and we're feeling a certain way because of what we're thinking. Right. So it's better to say, well, I see that you're upset, but I'm confused. Tell me why you're upset, and then, a person has an opportunity to let you know what they're feeling, what they're thinking, and the discussion can clarify if there's any wrong thinking, mm -hmm. the person has the opportunity to clear it up. But just to say, you shouldn't feel that way, I mean, it, it feels like a violation. Because they're saying you're weird. Something's wrong with you if you feel that way. Mm -hmm. But truly, feelings are not something we can do anything about. Someone feels that way, they just feel that way. We can't say that's wrong or right. It's a feeling. We can say that they misinterpreted, mm -hmm. or they misunderstood, or tell me more. And I think that's very important about com conflict of any kind that's erased from when someone says, you know, a boundary's been invaded. Or when someone says, I don't, because you know, I love my boundaries. I always hate other people's, mm -hmm. even though they define for me more who they are and what's expected of me, so I know how to live with them. Sometimes when someone comes to me and confronts me when I've hurt them, I hate that. You know, I hate that. And you have a choice, really. You can say, you know, you shouldn't feel that way, which immediately upsets them. Mm -hmm. Or you can look at it as this is truly a chance for me to get to know them better. That this is something I didn't understand about them. This is something I didn't know about them, and they're going to tell me about it. So that next time, I'll know how to be a better friend. Mm -hmm. and, and so instead of immediately having it push you apart and have you not ever, you know, be close again, it's a chance really to pull you even closer together. Mm -hmm. And so you just say, listen, I didn't understand that. Can you explain how you, how you came to that conclusion or, or why you felt that way? Some real practical things would be, you know, what if a neighbor, because we had this happen to us, borrowed, you know, my husband doesn't like to borrow any kind of um, mechanical equipment or lawnmowers or anything anymore because we had someone borrow our lawnmower, our riding mower, and it broke. And they brought it back broken. And it was someone we really cared about. But there is a violation there that something was expected more. That's a boundary, wouldn't you say? Uh, yes. In fact, it, uh, a lot of times people will borrow things and not bring them back mm -hmm. or keep them too long, and you have to go ask for them. Um, we may not like having to ask, but uh, asking for something back is a way of setting a boundary and setting saying it's it's not okay for you to keep this for an unlimited mm -hmm. amount of time. And if it seems to be repeated behavior, it would be okay to say, okay, if, if I let you borrow this, will you be able to get it back to me mm -hmm. within a certain time? And at a certain point to say, you know, um, I, I really don't think I can loan you things anymore because I, I just, my experience with you has been that I don't get them back and I might need this before you manage to get it back to me. Which will probably upset them. Yes. And so to explain it, and I think that's one of the most important things when you set boundaries is to do it with kindness yes. and love. Because we don't want to hurt them, we just want to be honest about how they're affecting us. And that, that is a hard thing. Um, can, you, can you think of another example where a friend or a neighbor or someone that you work with might invade your boundary? Um, when they have expectations of us um, as a friend mm -hmm. or a co-worker and then all of a sudden you're uh, experiencing some emotional distancing mm -hmm. but you don't know why and then you go to them and they said well you know 
if you were a really good friend, you would have remembered my birthday. Right. And you go, oh, so that's what this is about. I am so sorry. And there again, uh, as you said with conflict resolution, it's okay for you to say, you know, I didn't realize that it was that important to you mm -hmm. that I remember your birthday, but I will know this for next year and, I, you know, I want to honor that. But uh, we need to also take ownership of if we have expectations, there are our expectations and we may need to communicate our mm -hmm. expectations. Which happens at work a lot, really. Yes. They expect, especially if you don't have a job description. <laughs> so you should always have a job description. Um, but you find that you, people expect more out of you than you can give. And it's hard to go back and say, no, I, I can't do that in an hour. I really need two days. And so we talked about why boundaries, setting boundaries is so important in order to protect us. And, and we do that by being honest and upfront with kindness and love. You know, people talk about being honest, but it's better to do it with kindness because people respond better when we do it kindly. <laughs> but how about why consequences are so important? Let's say people keep crossing your boundary, like the person who borrowed the mechanical equipment, and the first time you talked to him, you said, okay, you can borrow it if you promise to return it in a certain amount of time. So you've given them chances based on being honest with what you need, and they keep violating that. Um, the consequences would be either not let them borrow it anymore, or, you know, that, that would be a consequence. Yes. Why are consequences so important? Uh, consequences tell the other person that we are serious about uh, our boundaries. We are serious about uh, protecting or setting a limit on mm -hmm. what we will allow and what we will not allow. Without consequences, we can say it all we want, but nothing may change. Right. And so it, sometimes it takes consequences to make uh, that change happen in relationship. It's like uh, it, the analogy used um, is that it's like the barbs on the wire on a fence. Consequences are the barbs mm -hmm. on, the, on the fence. It keeps you away. <laughs> so you that keep you, keep yeah. you honoring the boundary. It's really a teaching moment, yes. and I, I know, and we had teen court on before, and we were talking about teenagers, um, kids in general, when they have a parent set boundaries with them. So often, it's been, it's hard to be consistent with those boundaries, um, with the consequences of boundary crossing. But if you don't, then the children don't learn. And I know for me that I have learned that they trust what I say now, and they have learned that I mean what I say. They have also learned that based on certain things that they do, another thing that's not pleasant will happen if they cross that boundary. Mm -hmm. But if they do follow directions and do follow the boundaries, good things happen. And they've learned that. And so from certain, like a child when he runs out on the road, he can almost be hit by a car. Um, teenagers, when they steal from Walmart or someplace like that, when they get, they get caught and then they have to do hours and go to court and all that, Consequences are important because they won't learn from that. And it's unfortunate, really, that we're humanly we're made that way, that we have to feel the pain before we change. <laughs> we just don't. So if you remove consequences from a person, you're actually removing the teachable moment for them. And that means they'll have to repeat it before they'll learn it. Yes. With, they'll have to repeat it without you around mm -hmm. when you don't actually remove the consequence before they can learn. Uh, consequences to actions uh, being taught by parents to children uh, will help them learn about life and reality mm -hmm. because when they make choices later in life as adults there will be consequences to their choices so parents uh, do children a dis uh, favor if they do not teach them by consequences mm -hmm. they're teaching them something that is not true about life and reality and they can grow up expecting not to experience consequences to their mm -hmm. poor choices. And yet even when they grow up, it can be a parent or a friend that removes the consequences. It can be a spouse. Yes. You know, if you have an alcoholic or abusive husband, the first time he hits you, if you don't do something about it, well, he may hit you again. Or if a child, you know, goes out and steals, if you don't do something about it, he'll do it again. 
Whereas if you don't remove those consequences and let them, and that's hard for a parent as the children grow up, and it can be very hard for a spouse who truly loves their husband and hates to see them harmed. And yet it's exactly that harm, it's not harm, it's hurt. Harm is when something is really bad for us. Hurt is just what we feel when certain things happen. And good things can happen, it can be hurtful. I know I hate when bad things happen that help me grow. It's painful. <laughs> And we need pain to grow. Mm -hmm. um, where did you get most of your ideas from boundaries? Was it from a book? Was it from experience? Or is it both? I mean, if you had to give point our, read, our, our watchers to some resources. I noticed you have the boundaries books here. Uh, yes. Uh, the boundaries book that I've used when I've taught groups on boundaries uh, is by Dr. Henry Cloud and Dr. John Townsend. You can hold it up. Uh, and it's the name of it is Boundaries. When to say yes, when to say no, how to take control of your life. Um, I've liked their treatment of it because they also explain how boundaries develop, what mm -hmm. type of boundary conflicts that we tend to have, and they give a practical way for how to grow in boundaries. Mm -hmm. It can be as simple as someone saying, uh, that was a great movie. And someone else saying, what are you talking about? That was a horrible movie. And that does happen. <laughs> and so boundaries with that can be just clearing up what's really going on in that conversation. Someone may have said something and stated it as if it's a fact, mm -hmm. when in truth it was their opinion. Uh, and uh, so if you say, oh, so you liked that movie. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I really didn't like it. Just by changing the wording, you have cleared it up and you have set the boundary to where it's okay for you to have your opinion about mm -hmm. it and it's okay for me to have a different opinion. Right. Otherwise, it feels like a violation if you say, that's a great movie, and someone else says, that was a stupid movie. What are you talking about? <laughs> and they're offended probably that you like it. And they're it. offended by that. And if you can move it from there. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, Cloud and Townsend in their book, one of the things I had been studying boundaries without that term for a long time and I like that they made it so simple yes and I, I wish I'd written it mm -hmm. <laughs> but I didn't um, they put it in such simple terms and they they also which was the most important thing to me because of the way I used to be explained why it's so important and why it's loving and explain it from a way to see that this truly is a very loving thing to, to do to set boundaries for ourselves and and to have our own desires and that, that's not selfish it's actually loving. And um, if for people who have kind of confused selfishness with you know, what we need to do to, sh to be ourselves and to show people that uh, we have certain rights and responsibilities, it's actually loving, not selfish. So this would be a good thing. Um, groups, you said something about you're, you're doing groups. Uh, Cornerstone Counseling Center does have groups on boundaries, which is also helpful. We have women and men from all walks of life come who struggle with different things and have really seen them grow from that. Yes. So those are some great things. I, I do know that I'm constantly learning how to better hone my boundary skills. Once I got down my boundaries, then I really got to the point of how I was invading other people's. And I think I'm more aware of that now because I see it so often. And so I was so wrapped up in me, the victim, now I realize, you know, I do it to others and we don't want to do that. So I just point you to the boundaries book and. We want to do a, We want to have you back if you'll come back, yes. and we'll talk next time about really boundaries with kids because that's a tough area for all parents. How to be consistent and why it's so important to set boundaries and have good, healthy consequences. So we hope that you'll come back and join us for Living Well next time, and we hope that we've helped you live better and help your family be healthier. Thank you for watching.